Good morning and welcome to Winchester Cathedral. Welcome to this choral Eucharist at a time of mourning. We're very pleased to welcome you here this morning in person and also to welcome everyone who's joining us online. It's very good to be praying and worshipping with you today. We meet in a time of mourning for the loss of our dear Queen. We meet in faith that life is eternal and love is immortal. And we know that we and many people are affected by this loss because it echoes other losses in our lives. And it is a time for us to be kind and gentle with ourselves and one another. So welcome to this service. We also feel it's very important to continue to welcome our community to their cathedral. And so we're going to keep the main doors open this morning during worship, which we don't normally do. Aware that this might cause some disruption to us, but it's very important that we signal to our community that we're here for them and open to them and we can put up with a little bit of hubbub as we worship and I'm sure that the Lord will not mind. There will be a public service of commemoration here next weekend on Saturday evening at six o'clock. That will be in some ways the main Winchester Cathedral service, Saturday at six o'clock. And then, as we have done with previous royal occasions, we will be televising the funeral on a big screen here on Monday. I think it's at 11 o'clock, the funeral. And if you would like to experience the funeral with others in a context of worship, then please come and join us for that service. We have some lovely prayer cards here by the Books of Commemoration, so do please make sure that you take yours. And there is coffee served after this service in the north transept as usual. Whether you're in the building here or joining us online, I do hope that you will be fed this morning in word and sacrament.
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. We gather today in a time of mourning. We come to this place to be held and fed in word and in sacrament. We come here to experience faith, hope and love and to grow in confidence in the promise of eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. As we acknowledge our human frailty, we call to mind our sins of word and deed and omission and confess them before God our Father.
May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. Amen. We pray. Eternal God, our Maker and Redeemer, grant us with your servant Queen Elizabeth and all the faithful departed the sure benefits of your Son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seemed to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. From the Book of Wisdom, the souls of the faithful are in the hand of God, and the faithful will abide with God in love. Today we mark the end of an era, the second Elizabethan era. And as we continue to mourn the death of the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and begin to look to the future and to the reign of King Charles, I want to talk today about something that never changes. I want to talk about love the ways in which the life of our late sovereign taught us about love and shone with love. And I realize as I speak that for many of us, this is personal, perhaps surprisingly personal. Perhaps you found yourself crying in the last few days and wondered why, but it has affected us. On Friday evening when we sang for the first time here, God Save the King, I found it very emotional and had tears in my eyes. I'm sure many others did too. And this loss resonates for many of us with other deaths and other losses and we feel them deeply. So I'd like to talk this morning about the love exemplified in the life of Elizabeth, our late queen, which was rich and multifaceted. To be treasured and honored is her love of family and love for her beloved husband, her liege man, Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Their long married life together 
their family life. We saw the great depth of love and affection inspired by his mother when King Charles spoke to us on Friday evening. This family love was at the heart of love that overflowed through the life of the nation and commonwealth and world. The worldwide impact of her life has been recognized in heartfelt international reaction to her death. When she was just 21 years old, Princess Elizabeth said, I declare before you that my whole life whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. God help me to make good my vow. And it was through this service that she expressed love. And Elizabeth was faithful to this anointed calling all her life. In this faithfulness, she has been a living example for us of one of the virtues of Saint Benedict and the rule that Saint Benedict has written for Benedictine communities. She exemplified stability. Stability is remaining in the task that God has given you and to the place where God has set you. In her 2014 Christmas broadcast, she said, the life of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life. The purpose of an anchor is to hold you securely in one place. I remember Grace and Perry, the artist and national treasure, giving the wreath lectures a few years ago. He spoke about how if artists and craftspeople want to get good at their craft, they must stick with it. His expression was, stay on the bus. Once you've chosen your direction, stay with it. Well, in the Queen's case, it's not a bus, but a royal carriage. And we've seen in Queen Elizabeth an extraordinary example of staying with the task of faithful service. She has modeled stability, as Saint Benedict would say, because she is anchored in Christ. This faithful service has been a stable background for our national life, to the values that undergird and support our common life, and enable us to live together. We can so easily take this heritage for granted. Like the rule of law, democratic government, fairness, tolerance, the quiet but steady place of faith in the life of our nation. We can take these for granted, but they are vital and take daily attention to maintain. The late Queen showed us love through her faithfulness, stability, and her service. The surface of royalty is glittering. There's pomp and pageantry. Underneath it all, however, the meaning of the robes and the symbols are profoundly serious and challenging because they symbolize service and self-sacrifice. At the coronation service, the monarch receives the golden orb, symbol of the world, and it is surmounted by a cross. Likewise, the scepter and the crown, encrusted with jewels, are under the cross of Christ. Over everything that the world offers, are the demands of the cross and a calling to sacrifice and service. Now we know that leaders are always faced with temptations about how they use their power and authority and the Bible tells us very clearly of Hebrew kings struggling 
between what was godly and wise and sacrificial and what was easy and vain. To stay with the path of service, to live by godly virtues and values, to live by the values just exposed to us in the Beatitudes of Jesus, has been Elizabeth's greatest achievement. She has lived by rules that others are expected to live by, as we saw when she sat alone at the funeral of her dear husband. She has always been humble in the exercise of power. And her Christian path has been generous. As Supreme Governor of the Church of England, Elizabeth interpreted the calling of the church as that of protecting the free expression of all faiths in the country. The Church of England is to be a generous church, an umbrella under which all can shelter. In her person, she's embodied Christ's love and care for everyone, regardless of race or creed and culture, and she has stood up for their rights and their right of self-expression. And this has been profoundly valued by minority communities. As the Queen has embodied service, she has shown us daily humility. One example of this is to sublimate self-expression. She wore a most beautiful, thoughtful, and detailed uniform of office. Never fashionable, nor unfashionable, in which personal preference took second place to role. She wore bright colors in order to be easily seen amid crowds. She dressed thoughtfully and with great care to honor those she would be seeing. This was part of her discipline, obedient to the demands of her role. While all the time we suspected, given the choice, she would rather have been in tweeds and Wellington boots. As Her Majesty showed us humility in dress, she showed us humility by treating everyone with the same courtesy, princes and paupers with the same calm, attentive interest and concern. I loved the story from Harriet Harman MP, mother of the House of Parliament, about when she was sacked as Secretary of State, she told this story, she was sacked as St Secretary of State, and her inbox emptied and her phone went silent. No one wanted to be associated with her, she said, except she heard from the palace with the former Secretary of State come to tea with the Queen. This is the disciplined, humble work of love. Our late sovereign has exemplified for us love, instability, faithfulness, service, and humility. And I found her Christian example came to mean more and more to me as I've grown older. And in public ministry, hers has been an invaluable role model. Sometimes, honestly, when I've been at an event that's gone wrong, or something horribly embarrassing is going on in some way, I have gained inspiration from thinking, what would the Queen be doing with her face right now? I will just try to do that with mine. Finally, I want to say that Her Majesty has also exemplified love with her sense of joy and humor, because saints are not meant to be miserable. She has showed that taking one's role seriously is not the same as taking yourself seriously. Taking tea with Paddington Bear during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, or on special assignment with Mr. Bond, astonishingly agreeing to appear to jump out of a helicopter to get to the Olympics, 
we had an insight into someone who held dignity lightly. When our new king addressed the nation, he spoke of his intention to serve us with loyalty, respect, and love. Love was named explicitly several times in that address. And so we see the example of his mother living on in his life and in our lives. And I hold on to this, which I've often said at funerals. Love doesn't end in dying or leave with the last breath. For someone we've loved deeply, love doesn't end in death. Queen Elizabeth's shining example of love will live on in Charles, in her family, in all those who are influenced by her, and I hope in each of us. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. As we mourn the death of Elizabeth, our Queen, let us give thanks to God in faith and trust. For the gift of Christ Jesus and for all whose devotion to him has sustained the life of our church and nation. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and all the royal family, for the ministers of the Crown and all who bear the privilege and burden of government. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For all people touched by Elizabeth's devotion to public service. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our own lives, giving thanks for all those who have gone before and asking that we might go forward with confidence and hope. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh God, in whom we live and move and have our being, grant that your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, that we may ever trust in your unfailing love through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Would you please stand? Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The offertory hymn, during which a collection will be taken towards the ministry of the cathedral and gifts brought forward, number 271.
now we give you thanks because through him you have given us eternal life and delivered us from the bondage of sin and the fear of death into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. We offer through him this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offenses, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Please be seated as we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we all one body because we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those of you who join this worship online, you will find prayers on the screen to enable and help you to make your spiritual communion, knowing that in the power of the Spirit, we are all one in Christ Jesus.
Let us pray. God of love, may the death and resurrection of Christ, which we have celebrated in this Eucharist, bring us with all the faithful departed into the peace of your eternal home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock and our salvation, to whom be glory for time and for eternity. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? you for being part of this worship today here in the building online and also outside it's been very good to worship with you today just to remind you that this cathedral your cathedral is open for you all week so come whenever you wish and we have major services next weekend and next Monday God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Friends, thank you for visiting Winchester Cathedral on this special day. Refreshments do follow the service and any visitor or mourner is welcome to join for that. That's on the left-hand side, the north side of the cathedral in the side transept. You're very welcome to attend. Indeed, we uh, look forward to meeting you there. For those of you who remain in the building, it will help us reset the building for the rest of the visitors of the day. If you could either go to coffee or move to the west end of the cathedral towards the open doors so our Virgin team 